With the recent release of Flutter 2.0, Flutter has moved from a mobile framework to a portable framework, meaning that responsiveness has just taken some new heights on the importance level. We're going to cover some different tips, but we will also have our own custom widgets to help with our responsive designs. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe. You can find the full write-up at robertbrunhage.com. And of course, before we begin, make sure to smash the like button and let's get into it. Let's start off with the first one, which is the layout builder. So with the layout builder, we can get the constraints or the dimensions of the parent widget. And depending on those constraints, we can build our child widget with different heights and width and so on. It's also relatively easy to use. So you define a layout builder, which will give you the context and the constraints. Now, for example, if we want to show something or display something, depending on the max width, we can just select the constraints.maxwidth and then we can compare it to a arbitrary number. In this case, we'll just put it to something like 600. So if the max width is larger than or equal to 600, we will have a container with a specified height and width and a color of blue. This will just give you a understanding of what the layout builder is about. So now in all of the other cases, so in the else statement, we'll do the same thing, but we will change the color to red instead. So now looking at the website, we can see that we have this blue box. Now, if we would change the window size, we, we can see that we are going to get a red box as well. Now we don't really have a parent widget that decides the size, so it will just take the full size of the window. We can also see an example of this by using the media query. With media query, we can get the size of the window wherever we are. So even if we are in a deep child component, we'll be able to get the constraints from the full window size. So a typical use case is that if you have a app bar and for example, in different sizes, you could hide the app bar or display the app bar. And to get a media query, it's very simple. You can define a variable. I'm just going to take the screen width and the media query is a inherited widget. So we can just write media query dot of context. We can select the size and now take the width as that's what we defined the variable for. Now we can use the ternary operator to say that we want a app bar depending on the size of that screen width. Now, of course you can invert what I write here and you will get a example of when the website is large, you will not have an app bar. And if it's minimum or small, we will get a app bar. But in this case, we will get the complete offset. So most of the times you want to do the offset of what I did here, but you get the thing. Now, these two are the main components for building responsive UIs, but it's very hard to manage without constants or breakpoints. So let's define a new file. We can just call it breakpoints to make it simple, but you can also call it constants or whatever you prefer. Now, if we navigate to this file, we can start actually defining some constants. We'll prefix it by a K, so it's very simple to find all of these constants. And for example, we can have a K tablet breakpoint and we'll set it to a pixel size or a double to what we wanted to actually breakpoint for the tablet version. Now there are no specific rules that you need to have, but this should work just fine. We can do the same for the desktop breakpoint. We can set the desktop breakpoint to 1440. Also, of course, you can define more breakpoints or constants if you want it here as well. So for example, if you have a menu bar to the left, you want it to be 300 pixels on desktop and maybe on a smaller device or a tablet, you maybe want to use a navigation rail instead. And this constant makes it very easy to be consistent with that. So with this, we can actually build a responsive layout widget. So let's start off by just creating a new file. I will just give it the name responsive layout, but in essence, you can rename this to whatever you actually prefer. And the purpose of this widget is to display the mobile version, the tablet version and the desktop version, depending on these breakpoints that we have created. So first off, let's define a stateless widget and import our dependencies. Now we can define our variables that we want to use. So a final widget for the mobile body, and we do the same for the tablet as well as the desktop. So when you use this widget, you will just be able to pass another widget and you can display those widgets depending on these different breakpoints. Let's go ahead and as well add a constructor for this. I will put it at the top so it's a bit easier to follow. 
So let's just add a comma at the end so we can get a nice formatting of it. And for the mobile body, we will actually make it required. This will force us to actually pass a mobile body for it. And we don't actually have to pass a tablet body. Remember, this is before null safety. So if you want to use it when you have null safety, there are a bunch of different ways. And if you have problems with that, just let me know down in the comments. Now we're going to create a layout builder. You can also use the media query if you want to do that instead. But in this case, we'll just use a layout builder. So let's define the builder, which is, is the context and the constraints. And I prefer most of the times to use to rename these constraints to dimens for dimensions. But it doesn't really change the fact what it is. Now we can actually do some if cases for determining when we want to display what actual widget. So the first if, we can check the dimensions and then select the max width. And if this is less than the breakpoint we created for the tablet, we're just going to assign the mobile body. In a way, this forces us to be more of a mobile first design, which is most of the times what I prefer anyway. Now for the else if statement, we're going to check the max width on the dimensions once again. And we're going to compare it two times. So first off, we're going to compare it if it's more than or equals to the K tablet breakpoint, as well as we're going to check the dimension max width that it is less than the K desktop breakpoint. Now, this is what makes it possible to just be able to pass the mobile body. So in this return statement, we're just going to pass the tablet widget or the tablet body. Now, this is what makes it possible to actually use the mobile body here. So when we return the tablet body, if that is null, we will instead return the mobile body. And we'll do the same for the else statement, meaning that we're going to pass the desktop body. And if that is null, we're going to display the mobile body. That way we always have a way to go back to the mobile body if we haven't passed a tablet or a desktop version of it. Now let's look at the implementation of this widget. And it's rather simple actually. So going over to the main.dart file in the scaffold for the body, we can define our new widget that we just created. And the name was responsive layout, so we'll just use that. Now this one requires us to pass a mobile body. So let's just define a mobile body just for the sake of it. So let's just define a temporary one. Let's call it my custom mobile content. And this one ex just extends the stateless widget. We don't really care about what we return here right now because this is just a showcase of it. We'll create a similar one for the tablet as well. So you can get a bit of understanding of how it works. So now going up to the responsive layout, we can pass our custom mobile content widget. So right now there is no specific difference between not having the widget at all, but we actually have the implementation to use pass a tablet body if we ever want to. The same can be said for the desktop version. Now, one major thing you see in websites is that they have a max width of the content and that it's centered in the middle of the site. And to implement this, it's actually a lot more simple than you probably think. We're going to define a new class. I will just give it the max with container as a name, but you can, of course, name it to whatever you want. And this will just be a very simple stateless widget. So let's define that and give it the name of max with container. Don't forget the import statement for the stateless widget. And first off, before we write anything in the build method is that we actually have to define some variables. And the only variable we're going to define is a child, or in this case, a widget. Now, of course, we can create a constructor, put it at the top, that's just my preferred style. And we're going to make the child a required parameter. Now, as this is before null safety, you should probably just add a assert as well, but we will not care for that because null safety is on its way. Now, the first widget we're going to have in the build method is actually a center. This will force all of the content to just be centered in the vertical axis as well as the horizontal, but this will more be in the vertical statement in this case. We're going to use a widget called constrained box. This will make it possible to have a child, which will be the child we pass into our widget, as well as we can pass our constraints. And our constraints will be the max width that we want this content to be able to have. 
Now there are a bunch of different numbers for what the max width should actually be. But as we use A1440, a very normal use case is to just have it to 1180 in width. That should give you a good base case. And if you want to explore further on what you actually want, there's a bunch of different materials on that out there. And of course, to utilize this as a constant, we can go to our breakpoints file and define a new constant. We'll just define it as the max width. And we will set that to 1180. Now moving back to our widget, we can now replace this number to our constant instead. So you just write k and we will get the k max width. Now to use this, it's very simple. You just wrap the widget that you don't want to actually extend past this max width. After that, you're actually all set. So an example of this is that you can go to the main file and let's say you don't want this responsive layout or the children of that to ever pass that breakpoint or max width. So we can just use the tooling, select the responsive layout and just wrap it with a new widget. Change that widget to the max width container that we just created. And that's all we have to do. Now, of course, this is just one way to do all of these things. There are a bunch of different packages that already have all of these things implemented and probably in a better way as well. But with this, you should get an understanding on how you can actually define or create your responsive layouts. Let me know down in the comments if you use a approach like this or if you use any specific package and share that knowledge with others. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe as well as checking out Patreon where I have a bunch of different perks. All kind of support helps, so it really means a lot. I have some awesome other videos coming up on the screen right now, so make sure to check them out. And I will see you in the next one.